Hello, 5th and 6th grade. Today is Thursday, October the 8th, and we are starting a new section in history. You actually started doing some reading, a little bit of, uh, actually, you're going to be starting your reading today, pages 48 to 50. But let's look at that work text page, which is going to be one page, page 35. And in this work text page, um, you're focusing on the Nile River. And as you'll see, you put the answers in the top blanks there. There are 14 questions, and you put the answers in the top blank. From the questions that are below. So we're going to talk about Egypt's geography and how it helped against invasion. The Bible's name for number two says Bible's name for Egypt is dangerous rapids in the Nile River are called and then the dangerous section of the river slowed the advancement of what? The river's current allowed something to sail northward. The Egyptians blanked on the Nile for food and water. The river blanked from north to south where um, there was no water in Egypt. Um, there was uh, where there's no water in Egypt, there was blank. Wherever the Nile flowed, something grew nearby. Sections of the Nile became shallow and rocky, causing some kind of rapids. Trade, some, some kind of trade developed where river traffic slowed. Um, Egyptians worshipped the Nile rather than some, something about the true God. Um, the Nile is four whatever miles long. And then 14 is descendants of Mizraim, the blank of Noah, settled in northeastern Africa. Then there is actually there are actually fifteen altogether because it says use the shaded letters, which are the ones that are down from one through fourteen, to fill in the blanks there. And so now we provided blank for travelers and traders. So that's what your worksheet is. And now that we've got that, let's go ahead and turn to page forty-eight. There's not a lot of reading in this, in, in reality, because the reading has to do with um, uh, well, the first page is actually 48. That's just a picture page. It says, focus. The Nile River was important to Egypt's economy and religion. And then uh, on page 49, so it says there, name five things you're grateful for today. Did you know that being grateful and expressing gratitude are good for you? Grateful people sleep better. Do not get as stressed and have more energy than people who focus on negative things. The Bible reminds Christians to give thanks to God in everything in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. And ancient Egyptians had a tradition of being grateful in honor of God, a goddess named Hathor or Hathor. All classes of people, from the pharaoh to the field laborers, observed a ritual called the Five Gifts of Hathor. In the ritual, Egyptians held out their left hands, the hand of work, and named five things in their lives for which they were grateful. I guess you can count them on your fingers: one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, or one, two, three, four, five. All right. And so maybe that was the reason they used their hand. Um, and it says, uh, being, and name five things in your life which they were grateful. Being ungrateful or complaining was considered the root of all other bad action. What do you think Hepu and Adjo might be thankful for as they swim in the Nile River? Perhaps they're thankful that that person on the bank has alerted them to the cobra sunning itself on the rock. And you can see that cobra there. Hadn't noticed it until they mentioned it. Um, in the background, you see there some palm trees. You see some pyramids in the background. You also see farmland. And you see... Um, one of the workers carrying some water in two pots that uh, would hang over his neck. And this uh, little device there that they used to dip down into the water to be able to get uh, water from the Nile. And so um, it's uh, a very part, big part of Egypt's history is the Nile River. So go over to page 50. So we'll read this together. And as we've already been reading, and just follow along. And I'll try to point out some things as I remember as we went through the worksheet as to what um, they are referring to, or, or that, that might be something to look for in your um, worksheet. And it says, the Egyptian civilization. Why was Egypt called the gift of the Nile? As the Sumerian civilization was developing in Mesopotamia, other civilizations were growing in Europe, Asia, and Africa. Some people settled in northeastern Africa. These people were the descendants of Mizraim, a son of Ham, and a grandson of Genoa in the original language of the Bible. And, um, Sorry, of Noah. And so remember that one was one of the notes that we had. In the original language of the Bible, the land is called Mizraim. But English translations usually call it Egypt. Many events recorded in the Old Testament took place in Egypt. And so that's a, um, uh, that is a uh, big thing right there. Uh, one of the questions that you have um, about Mizraim. All right. And it says the Nile. An aerial view, aerial view of the Nile would reveal a thin ribbon of green Cutting a desert into two parts. Running through that green ribbon is a long blue thread, the Nile River. 
Nile River is the longest river in the world. It begins in Central Africa and runs 4,000 miles north to the Mediterranean Sea. Now, on your worksheet, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but um, on your worksheet, there was a, a one question that I, I questioned as soon as I saw it. It didn't sound right, but let me double check this page 35 again. Um, so if you go there to your worksheet and you look at, it says, uh, number um, seven, the river blank from north to south. And the river, and I'm pretty sure the answer there is going to be flows, but that is not north to south. It flows from south to north. And that's an important part. It says right there um, in it what we just read. It says that uh, and it runs 4,000 miles north. It runs north, which means it goes from south to north. And so that um, is a mistake in there. And so you want to switch that around. Uh, you want to change that to um, mean to change from uh, north to south, from south to north. All right. And if you look up there for number seven, you can see the word flows does fit in there. And so you can put that in there. All right. So let's look, uh, continue reading. It says, imagine um, how the descendants of Mizraim felt when they saw the mighty Nile River for the first time. Egypt has been called the gift of the Nile. Without the Nile River, Egypt would have been very different. The Nile was a necessary part of ancient Egyptian life. The geography of Egypt protected the people from most invasions. Again, there was something in there about invasions, if you remember. Um, the vast and treacherous desert, the Sahara, provided protection from enemies in the east and west. As the Nile flowed through the Sahara, sections of the river became very, become very shallow and rocky, causing dangerous rapids. These areas are called cataracts. Now that's your secret word for today is cataracts. So make sure you write that on your um, syllabus for, to check tomorrow. Cataracts, again, was your secret word. Um, it says the cataracts slowed the advancement of invaders using the river to attack from the south. Or actually, I'm sorry, I, I missed a part of it there. Um, it says that uh, these areas are called cataracts. Six cataracts appear along the path of the Nile. Cataracts slowed the advancement of invaders using the river to attack from the south. The Nile River provided other benefits for the people. The Egyptians depended on the Nile for food and water. Wherever the Nile flowed, plants grew nearby. However, where there was no water, all was desert. At the edge of some Egyptian farms, a person could stand with one foot in green grass and the other foot in tan desert sand. Um, it's just how effective the water was and what they used it for. Um, again, they give you the definitions of Egypt and of the Nile River. Then on the top right there, it says the Nile River became a useful highway for transportation. Travelers and traders nav navigated the river, um, navigated the river. Trade settlements developed near the cataracts, where river traffic, where 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 river traffic slowed. And that was another one of those questions that was in there. The Nile, however, oh, I'm sorry, I missed a thing. Trade settlements developed. I read that. Okay, most river. Most major rivers flow north to south. The Nile, however, however, flows from south to north. And you see there's the actual um, part of what we're talking about. The current allowed boats to float or sail northward. Winds blowing from the north moved boats with sails southward against the current. Egyptians throughout history honored and gave thanks to the Nile. They gave it the nickname Hopi, which means well-fed or fat. They worshiped the Nile as a god rather than as uh, then acknowledging a true God who created the river. Okay, I'm not sure what exactly happened there, but there was some noise. So I just paused for a second until it went away. Now it's coming up again, so hold on. Okay, that was only a few seconds for you, but it took me a little bit to figure out how to, what I needed to do. But anyway, we're back on page uh, on the right side there at the top, almost done. Um, it said that uh, Egyptians throughout history honored and gave the name, uh, thanks to the Nile, they gave it the nickname Hopi, which means welfare or fat, and they worshiped the Nile as a god rather than acknowledging the true god who created the river. The following lines are from Egyptian, from the Egyptian hymn to the Nile. Hail to thee, O Nile, whose manifests thyself over this land and comes to give life to Egypt. Lord of the fish during inundation or flood, no bird alights on the crops. You create the grain, you bring forth the barley, assuring perpetuity or eternity to the temples. If you cease your toil and your work, then all that exists is in anguish. O Nile, come and prosper. Come, O Nile, come and prosper. Now, I don't know if you sing to your lake or to your rivers. Hopefully you don't. Maybe to your bathtub. You might sing in your bathtub, 
um, where water is flowing. But I don't think you worship your bathtub. Um, and so uh, j this is a, um, don't forget about the secret word, which I gave somewhere between six and eight minutes in case you missed it. Shouldn't have missed it if you were listening to the video, but that's where it is. All right, that's it. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye.